What an introduction. Amen. God is good. So we celebrate with you on these joyous celebration. Amen. 100 years. Amen. What an absolute blessing. And then just to reiterate, only five pastors in 100 years. Come on, somebody. That, wow. That's, that's just amazing. Amen. The ministry continues. Amen. Right up to the moment. It's just an absolute blessing. And uh, we're here as sons and daughters of the house. I say this is my crib. I can say this properly. I'm a homeboy. Right? Because <laughs> we're homegrown right here at Templo de la Cruz. And we're really, really excited. We're really, really blessed. Amen. We were saved here, here early in the 90s under the ministry of Dr. Uh, Richard Tanyon and Sister Ruth Tanyon. And we were just absolutely blessed to be here. Uh, and because of that, praise God, this June, my wife and I will be celebrating 20 years of ministry because of the fact that God saved us, amen, and filled us and, and gave us a, a place here, amen. So I just wanted to say on behalf of my wife, my, my better half, the best of me, and she's sitting back there. She had ankle surgery. Uh, so she's, we've been, uh, we've really gone through it, amen, Sister Becky, amen. So we, cel we celebrate also my, uh, my son-in-law here, Mr. Rudy Ontiveros, and uh, my beautiful daughter Lala is here, amen. And I can see my, my other family, the uh, Peñas are here, amen. My brother and sister and my daughters and my granddaughters in Christ, amen. My mother-in-law in Christ is here, amen. The whole nine, amen. So praise God, praise God for such an absolute blessing, amen, and op opportunity to be here. And uh, we're just, uh, we, just, we just really, really uh, just in enjoy our time here fellowshipping. Uh, we continue to do that through the miracle of Facebook, amen. We hear and see all the beautiful things, amen. Hey, it could be a good thing, but it could be a bad thing too, amen. But, you know, we're just going to make it a good thing, amen. And we're just going to, we're going to continue to stay connected, amen, with our family and friends. I uh, just wanted to share a couple of thoughts here uh, as we begin, uh, being the fact that it is Pentecost Sunday, amen. Uh, I just wanted to share a couple of thoughts of some of the things that I've learned about this Pentecost experience, amen, before we get started couple of things that I've learned, amen, and, uh, about this is, number one, it is impossible to have an encounter with the master of the universe, the champion of heaven, and still remain the same. Yeah. So if we've had some kind of a connection, some kind of a, and if we've had that Pentecostal experience, it was, it's almost impossible for us to remain the same, amen? Yeah. He won't change, amen? So, but we have to change to conform to what the Spirit is telling us now. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Amen? The second thing I learned is that we don't need to wait around for revival. We need to have a fresh Pentecostal experience regularly. And then go and share that experience wherever we go. Then revival will break out with no human effort whatsoever. Hmm. The third thing is that a Pentecostal experience is unique to the individual. As you saw in Acts chapter 2, where, where cloven tongues as a fire rested upon each individually. Amen? But the power experience is expressed outwardly. So we fill with the power of the Holy Spirit, and that power is expressed outwardly, and the world and those who in it are beneficiaries of the power of the Holy Ghost that is inside of us. Amen? So I just have a scripture I wanted to read just to get started here. It's Romans 8, chapter 10. Excuse me, Romans chapter 8, verses 10 and 11. And this is just the word that the Lord placed on my heart, amen, for this house. As we celebrate, amen, our time together, as we celebrate this beautiful Sunday morning, Romans 8, 10, and 11, just a couple of thoughts on Pentecost, amen, as we get started, and amen, I have a word that the Lord placed in my heart to share with you as a body of believers, amen, and the word of God reads as follows, you got it, everybody good, all right. And it says, and if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. So we have that experience of Christ being in us, amen? Christ being in us, amen? Verse 11, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, 
He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who indwells us. Amen. So here we have Christ who died on the cross for our sins. Amen. Who was laid in a tomb. Amen. And all of a sudden, the spirit enters in and blows the breath of life back into him. If the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you and me, amen, then that same spirit will give life to us, amen, as a, belie- as a body of believers. That's a Pentecost experience, amen. amen. Think about it. A dead body breathed back into life, raised again. And that same spirit on Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, that same spirit entered into each and every believer, amen? And they they were filled with the power of the Holy Ghost and brought life to them. Oh, that's good. See, that's the thing. It takes you from boom to kaboom. It takes you from pow to power, amen? How many of you want a fresh Pentecostal experience this morning? Huh? How many of you want a fresh Pentecostal experience this morning? I'm telling you, the disciples, you have to understand that the disciples also asked for a secondary Pentecostal experience. Do you know that? Are you aware of that? They were frustrated because having preached, having won all these souls, they were frustrated because now they were being bullied by those who were in control in charge of the situation. They were frustrated with their ministry, amen? What did they do? Over in Acts chapter 4, they asked the Holy Spirit again, fill us one more time, amen? Come on. A second Pentecostal experience is available, and it's scripturally available to each and every one of us. Hallelujah. In fact, I'm going to read it. If you will turn with me to Acts chapter 4, and then we're going to get started. I just have to ask, sometimes we get frustrated in ministry. Sometimes we get frustrated because we've served, we've, we've preached, we've shared, we've, we've given, we've surrendered, we've sacrificed many, many times over and over again. And we get frustrated like, Lord, where is this power? Where is this, uh, uh, what, where are the results of this ministry? Where are the results? When are these seats going to be filled? Hallelujah. And you know what the interesting thing is that because of that, the Holy Spirit answered their prayer. He answered their cry and he filled them one more time. Hallelujah. Can somebody say one more time? Oh, we need another experience. We need another Pentecostal experience. Just ask the Lord to do it again. Do it one more time, Lord. Do it one more time for this new century. Do it one more time for a new century, a turn of the century in this church. We've been here 100 years, Lord. What about the next? What about going forward? We need the power of the Holy Ghost going ahead, going forward. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 4, 29. You can read the whole story when you get home, but you know that they were threatened. And they were fearful. And they were frustrated, to be clear. Hallelujah. But look what it says. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and grant that they be, that thy bondservants may speak thy word with all confidence. While thou dost extend thy hand to heal and signs and wonders take place through the name of thy holy servant Jesus, and when they have prayed the place where they had gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak the word of god with boldness that's a second pentecostal experience amen somebody say do it again lord do it again we need a second feeling we need a second baptism we need a second experience we need it all over again lord god this world is getting crazy the people are getting crazier we're gonna need we're gonna need to be able to react amen to the lives that are around us with the powerful experience of the pentecost amen with the power of the holy ghost and the direction of the holy spirit to give us the unction amen that we need to reach the lost in this day and age hallelujah can how many can say amen Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence, oh God. Lord, you are good. And your mercy endures forever. We thank you because of the blessing that you've been to this house, oh God. And we thank you, my God, for what you'll continue to do, Lord God. You promised, oh God, forever your word is sealed in heaven. 
Your word is truth. Your word is yea and amen. What you promised over this house, Father, your word is promised. He who began a good thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You began a good thing here in this house, Lord God, and we pray and believe that you will continue that work. Exalt thy name, O God. Glorify thy name in this house, O God. I pray blessing, Karabasia. I pray blessing, Father. I pray that you would help me, Father. Grant me the clarity of thought, speech, and mind, Father God, to declare, Father God, thus saith the word. We thank you, Father, and I pray, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Amen. 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 Turn with me to John chapter 6, if you will. John chapter 6, verse 63. I just have a word that I needed to share with you. Being that this is a, 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 a pillar in the, in, the, in the Bay Area, being that this house is a pillar, I have to share a word that the Lord placed upon my heart, amen, to, to, to declare, amen, what, what, what God wants to do out of this house. And, and just remember that last portion of scripture where they said that they began to speak the word of God boldly. Mm. To have the boldness, amen, to declare, amen, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter 6, verse 63. Did I say that? We good? Okay. John chapter 6, verse 63. Watch this now. And it says, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who it was that would betray him. And he was saying, for this reason, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless he has been granted from the Father. And as a result, many of the disciples withdrew and we're not walking with him anymore. Jesus therefore said to the 12, you do not want to go away also, do you? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered, did I myself not choose you, the 12? Yet one of you is a devil. Now he, he meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. Hmm. Question, what is the most profound word you've read in the Bible? What is the most fearful word you've read in the Bible? What is the most shocking word you've read in the Bible? Just a few questions for you to ponder. Again, what is the most profound word you've read? What is the most fearful word you've read? And what is the most shocking word you've read? Hmm. Verse 63, this is why the disciples said, you have the words of life. The moment they entered into covenant with him, the words of life were planted inside of them. Huh? There is no limit to what, what man can do in the flesh. You have to understand that there's no limit to the evil. There's no limit to the, to, to, the, to the deeds that a man can do in the flesh. Whatever he does, he will continue to do and can continue it until death. But equally as important, there is no limit to what can be accomplished under the influence of the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said these words, I am giving you right now spirit and life. He says, you have the words, Peter told him, you have the words of life. See, God chose the ve vessel or the vehicle of the written word, which is the logos. In what forms did the logos come to us? Two forms. In the Bible, the word and Jesus himself. For the word became flesh. To deliver the spoken word, he's given us the rima. Hallelujah. What is the rima? It's the word of God breathed on by the power of the Holy Spirit. Huh? He's given us the rima word to communicate these words to a, a, to a dying world. Hmm. He says you have the words of life. Hallelujah. Huh? Uh, check this out. Lazarus was dead. John chapter 11 tells us that, that Lazarus was dead. Interesting fact. 
that had, I heard somebody say that if, if Jesus had just said, come forth at the, at the opening of that tomb, everybody would have rose. <laughs> but he had to say Lazarus specifically to get him to come out of that tomb. Hallelujah. And like Lazarus, hallelujah, I too was once dead in my tomb. Amen. Uh, in my sin and my transgressions. Hallelujah. But God used Pastor Danyon, hallelujah, to speak a word over me and say, John, come forth. Come out of that tomb. Come out from among them. Come out. Be separate. Come into the light. Be transformed out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. And hallelujah, here I came waddling out, wrapped up in my grave clothes. Amen. Hallelujah. And then somebody said, loose that man and let him go. And slowly they started. Hallelujah. Starting with Brother Don DeSoto. Hallelujah. Started taking off my grave clothes. Coming along with Brother Paul Roman, taking off my grave clothes. Coming along with Brother Ed Lugo, coming to take off my grave clothes. Hallelujah. Pastor Marty Moreno came along and took off my grave clothes to the point where I was free. Hallelujah. I could begin to serve. I could begin to live. I began to, I, I could begin to teach. I could begin to preach. Hallelujah. He said, loose that man and let him go. Hallelujah. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, you have the words of life. And it was those words, hallelujah, that were pronounced over me. Thank you, Jesus. He put my feet on a solid rock right here at Temple of La Cruz. And he gave me the words of life to share with the least, the last, and the lost. Hallelujah. This is the word that the Lord brought me here to tell you. Are you ready? You have the words of life. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the word. Hallelujah. You have the words of life. The living, active words of life. The words that will raise the dead. The words that will set captives free. The words that will heal the brokenhearted. The words that will bring back the, the backslider home. Hallelujah. You have the words of life. Thank you, Lord. God brought me here to tell this church, you have the words of life. And I'm going to coin a phrase here. Perhaps it's been said already. But I might be perhaps reiterated, but if it hasn't been said, let me the, be the first to say it. Hey, word, California shall have a new name. It should be Hey, word, W O R D. Huh? Huh? Hey, word, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit has spoken to me and told me that the word of God will come out of this house. The word of God will come out of this city. Hallelujah. There's no. I'm telling you that the reason this church has been here for a hundred years, pastor's still amazed, you should still be amazed, but God is not amazed because he has a purpose and a plan for this house. Hallelujah. Hey, word, California, W-O-R-D. Come on, somebody. Harabasia. Thank you, Lord. Huh? The gospel church has the words of life. The gospel church is the only institution that has been endorsed by the Father and the Son. And if that were not enough, sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit and anointed to reach out to the lost and dying world right here in Hayward, California, and going forward. Say, we have the words of life. Huh? Tell somebody, I have the words of life. Tell somebody, you have the words of life. Huh? I have the words of life. It's been given to me. Huh? Tell the world about Jesus. Tell them what he has done for you. Tell them what he is doing in your life today. Hallelujah. Huh? You hold the power of the blessing inside of you. And that transfer of power was the moment you accepted Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The word of God came inside of you. Hallelujah. It was a transplantation of a seed of life that came inside of you and began to bloom and began to grow as you gave it water, as you began to serve, as you began to love the Lord, as you began to love God's people. The word of God grew out of you. Hallelujah. The seed of the kingdom is the word of God. It is the contact of the divine spirit with the human spirit that through, not through teeth and palate, but through a mental and moral process that the Holy Spirit began to grow inside of you. Huh? First Peter chapter one, if you'll turn there real quick. I just, I'm a purist when it comes to the word. I like to quote the word scripture word for word if that's okay. First Peter chapter 1, that way you can get it inside of you and you can highlight it and take it home and read it again. Besides, I got to be careful. There's a theologian in the house. I got to make sure Brother Louis Vasquez doesn't check me. Velasquez doesn't check me. I got to make sure I'm giving the word. I don't want to get checked. 
First Peter 1, 23 and 25, Brother Louis, I salute you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Talk about pillars. Pillars in the house, amen. Talk about pillars in the house, bringing us up, amen. Bringing us up like little babies, just feeding us like bird seed. Just feeding us, amen. That's an absolute blessing. I can go on and on. Brother Bernard P. Corbin, with all due respect, we love you and your family. <laughs> First Peter chapter 1, amen. I get excited. I get excited because of what the word of God has given to us, amen. First Peter chapter 1, 23. Watch this. In fact, we can back up to 22. It says, since you have an obedience to the word, the, the truth, purified your souls. Oh, wait, truth, that's word, right? Since you have an obedience to the truth, somebody say word. Purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren. Fervently love one another from the heart. For you have been born again. How many have been born again? Hmm. For you have been born again, not of seed, which is perishable but imperishable. That is the living and abiding hmm, word of God. Wow. For all flesh is like grass, and all the glory like the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord abides forever. And here it is right here. And this is the word that was preached to you. Hallelujah. This is the word that was preached to you. Hallelujah. In other words, Christianity is an educated decision. You heard the word and you realize that this is good for me. This will get me out of my situation. This will cure my condition. Hallelujah. You made an educated decision. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, you're just some lazy Christian, lazy Christian that, that just needed a better life. And, and here you all just have, you just fell into the church. No, you made, a, you made an educated decision when you decided to follow Christ. Hallelujah. The second thing is we are saved through sanctification. We are washed through consecration. Huh? We're saved through sanctification. We are washed through consecration. And doesn't the scripture say that we are, we are renewed by the washing of water by what? The word. the word of God. Hallelujah. Wow. Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 3, 6. He says, Paul plants, Apollos waters, but the Lord gives the increase. Huh? If you want to go King James, that's okay. Paul plants, Apollos waters, but the Lord giveth the increase. Right? Huh? Paul plants what? Paul plants what? The word of life. Paul plants where? In the hearts of people. <laughs> One word is all it takes. That word is Jesus. Hallelujah. That word is Jesus. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what they look like. The word of God can impact their lives just like it impacted our lives. Every day we are alive. We've been given an opportunity to speak life. The law of, so the law of sowing and reaping is in full effect. In Isaiah 55, it gives us an opportunity to understand what the word of God teaches about giving and expecting in return the law of sowing and reaping. Hallelujah. God functions by the law of sowing and reaping. God is a God of order and principle. So when he enacts a law, he respects his own law. In this case, the law of sowing and reaping. He speaks and expects his word to come back, right? He says it. He will not send his word back until it comes back and accomplishes everything. Before it comes back, it will accomplish everything that is set out to accomplish. Hallelujah. To provide bread to the eater and seed to the sower and all those words, as you know, in Isaiah 55. The thing is this. Only after it has accomplished the purpose. So I'm praying that somebody's faith is stirred today. That the word of God, amen, is being used right now to fulfill his blessing upon your life. Huh? You plant the seed, the Lord will give increase to that seed. And you can expect a harvest. Let me give you another scripture. For those of us who have been praying for lost loved ones, who have been praying for backslidden loved ones, for those who have been praying for their children to get saved, to come to the place where they finally make their own decision, again, their educated decision. Psalm 126, 5 and 6, I believe, is the genesis of uh, evangelism. 
And I believe, uh, I once heard somebody say that evangelism is a clashing of souls. It's a clashing of spirits, amen? When, when you begin to go evangelize, when you learn about evangelism, one of the very, very basic principles about evangelism should be this scripture right here. And it says this, those who sow in tears shall reap with joyful shouting. He who goes to and fro weeping, bearing precious seed, huh? There's the word of life. There's the word of God. Huh? Shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Huh? What does that mean? Hallelujah. If I'm talking about if you began to, to begin to, to, to consider evangelizing somebody, or if you've been considering to evangelize somebody, begin with this. Begin to sow in tears. Begin to intercede for that individual or for that group of people or for that town or for that city. Begin to sow in tears on their behalf and begin to intercede and ask the Holy Spirit to give you the groanings, according to Romans 8, that cannot be uttered so that you can have an, uh, an impact on their life and the Holy Spirit can speak to you as to what the specific need is for that individual. You sow in tears, huh? And then you carry your seed in and you plant your seed, amen? The word of life, it, 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 it's, it's being positive, it's being helpful, it's, it's being cordial and respectful. And when and you give them a burrito, whatever you got to do, just get them to the place... Just get them to the place where they, re they understand that you're not here to harm them. And then, pow, you give them the word of life. Amen. You give them the scriptures. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you know, did you know that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God? Amen. Did you know that, that God demonstrates his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us? Did you know that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved? For with the mouth confession is made, resulting in salvation. And with the heart one believes, resulting in righteousness. Did you know that? Did you know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the genesis of evangelism. That's the genesis of evangelism right there. Psalm 126, 5 and 6, write that down. And check me on that, Brother Louie. Check me on that, please. <laughs> Tell somebody, speak life. Tell somebody, speak life. Speak life to the hurting. Speak life to the lost. Speak life to the walking dead. Speak life to the zombies. Speak life. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Speak life. Amen. Here, look at, look at Luke chapter 4. Interesting, interesting. How interesting that, that, that after Jesus had fasted for 40 days out in the wilderness, he was, he was sent out, led out to the wilderness by the Spirit. He fasted for 40 days, amen, and he was weak. He was tired. He was human. He was flesh, understanding that he was 100% man and 100% God. And I just have to tell you, where did Jesus get his power from if he walked as 100% flesh and 100% man? Huh? Two places. Number one, obedience to his father. Hear it. Obedience to his father and dependence on the Holy Spirit. He functioned under the power of the Holy Ghost. And the beautiful thing is, because he functioned as a 100% human being, we too can experience the same power, the same anointing, have the same experiences, and be used by God in a powerful way for two reasons. If we remain obedient to our Heavenly Father, and if we remain dependent on the Holy Spirit, the power, that Pentecostal experience, hallelujah, should not go away on Monday, on Monday morning, and we pack it. And we open it back up on Sunday morning. No, that Pentecostal experience should be done every single day. A refreshing, a refilling, a revival. Hallelujah. It's a daily process. Hallelujah. I know you don't just speak in tongues when you're at this altar. I know you speak in tongues on your... Sometimes, man, I get so fired up. I'm talking pretty soon. I'm speaking in tongues. Wait, wait, wait. There's people around here who don't know what that is. I get so excited. Why? Because it's a Pentecostal experience that's refreshing and renewed and revived every single day. Revival, yes, it is a personal experience. We have our own personal Pentecost. But the beautiful thing is that the world is the beneficiary of the power that dwells inside of us. Oh, Jesus, help me to speak your word. Luke 4, it teaches us, it's interesting, that, do you know the devil knows scripture? You know that, right? Somebody, please. Right? The devil knows his scripture. You got to know that. Amen? 
Interesting, interesting. The devil used a scripture, amen, to try to entice Jesus, right? But the interesting is, and what's the difference? They both invoked the authority of God's word, both of them. Jesus and Satan, they both invoked the authority of God's word. What's the difference? The difference is this, and then this is just simple. This is not, this is not scientific, but it's just practical, that the devil used the logos, which is the word, written, God, written word of God. He simply used the logos. And, you know, that's interesting that you can hear people use the logos, just quote scriptures, and it just falls flat on the floor. Activists use it nowadays. Activists use the scripture just to kind of to, to, to try to reiterate their, their, their argument over a particular cause, particular case. And it's just kind of like, oh, man, why are you using scripture there? Right? But here's the difference. Jesus had the Holy Spirit inside of him already. Hallelujah. So the difference is between the logos and the rima. When Jesus spoke the rima word, hallelujah, what is the rima word? It's simply the logos breathed on by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So each and every one of us, are, are we, we have the capacity to declare the word of God. If you've been filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, you're speaking a rima word. Every time you speak the word of God, the Holy Spirit... Pff, Breathes on that word. Hallelujah. It has an effect in, in ways that you don't even understand. In ways that you can't even comprehend. Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Shame on us for trying to put him in a box and try to send him down alongside of us. You be the paraclete and sit right here. Don't say nothing. Just be cool. At the right time, you can speak. Shame on us for thinking that way. The power of the Holy Ghost cannot be contained. You, that's why you cry. That's why you shout. That's why you jump. That's why you sing. That's why you speak in tongues. Because he's right here inside of you. The power of the word of God is in you. And you have the words of life. Oh, word. Hmm. Wow. Give that word. Give that logos to a blood-washed believer. Hallelujah. And that word will come to life. Huh. Now take it another level. By declaring a rima word, now there's an element of power added to the how. Hallelujah. Added to it how? When the Holy Ghost filled the powerhouse let me re-say, re-say that. When a Holy Ghost filled powerhouse speaks the word of life, it is breathed on by the power of the Holy Spirit within them. And it becomes fire to the hearers. Huh? When Jesus was raised from the dead, if you remember that experience on the road to Emmaus, when Jesus was walking, all of a sudden two disciples began to, he began to walk next to two disciples, and, and he was sharing with them, he began to declare the word of God to them. At the end, it was so interesting that he just, he, was, he said he acted like he was going to go this way, and they wanted to go this way, and, and, and then finally they departed at the end of it all. What did these two disciples say? Watch this. What did the two disciples say to each other? It's very, very interesting. They said, did not our hearts burn? <laughs> That's fire. Did not, did not our hearts burn within us as the word of God was being spoken to you? Hallelujah. That was the Rima word that was being spoken. He wasn't carrying around the, the scriptures. He wasn't carrying around the book of Isaiah t- teaching them. It was the spirit of God who was speaking through him. Hallelujah. And every word that he spoke, every scripture that he declared, hallelujah, it was God breathed by the spirit. Hallelujah. And it became fire to the hearers. Did not our hearts burn within us when he was speaking the word of God to us? Woo! Wow. Just one word is all it takes. Amen? Just one word is all it takes. And listen, every time a fire breathing, flame throwing believer says, thus said the word of God, there's a fire that burns inside the souls of the hearers. You have those words. Hallelujah! Oh! I'm going to say that again. Every time a fire breathing, flame throwing believer declares, thus said the word... There's a fire that burns into the souls of the hearers. You may not see the immediate results, but it's working inside of them. Hallelujah. It's burning inside of them. Hallelujah. To the point where they, when they finally settle in, they say, man, what was that guy saying? It just burns inside of me. That's the power, hallelujah, of the Holy Ghost. As you breathe, as you spoke the word of God, the, the Holy Spirit breathed on it and it and became fire to the hear. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. I think somebody needs to be encouraged today. I think the church needs to be encouraged today that we're not going to sit down. We're not going to be silent. We're not going to shut up. 
We're not going to try to be uh, uh, so organized and try to keep your God in a box, amen? We're going to let the power of the Holy Ghost work inside of us. If he says to sing, I'll sing. If he says to jump, I'll jump. If he says to dance, I'll dance. If he says to shout, I'll shout. If he says to speak in tongues, I'll speak in tongues. Hallelujah. We will not contain the power of the Holy Spirit. Let him free. Let him free in the spirit. Let him free in the church. Let him free at the altar. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Just one word. Just one word is all it takes. That word is Jesus. Just one word. Learn one scripture and wear that scripture out. That's okay. You don't have to be like Brother Louie and know every scripture, amen? I'm going to make another declaration. I said it to him privately. I heard a testimony about an individual, and that testimony touched me, and I immediately thought of Brother Louie Velasquez. And it was this. The Bible is full of revelation. And Brother Louis Velasquez is full of the Bible. Hmm. Chew on that. One word is all it takes. Hmm. Job spoke life in times of trouble. He spoke the words of life in times of trouble. After having lost it all, he could not find a way to curse God. He tried. 38 chapters, he tried to figure out how to curse God. In fact, his wife even encouraged him. Go ahead, Job. Una patada. Le dio una patada. Go ahead, Job. Curse God and die. You're done. You're through. I didn't say you're through. You're through. That's beyond through. They done, they done threw you in the, in, they done threw you in the grave by now. You're not through, you're through. Go ahead, Joe. He couldn't, he, I'm sure he, you know, in his mind, I'm sure he tried to articulate the words. I'm sure that in his mind, he tried to articulate the words. He cursed the day he was born. He hoped that he was been, would have been stillborn, Right? He hoped that he had never seen the light of day. All those things took place, but he could not find a way. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because the word of life was inside of him. Hallelujah. God was too good. God was too good to him to curse his own heavenly father. Amen. He couldn't find the way. Huh? Listen to these words by a famous, famous uh, hymnist. Watch this. It says, it is well with my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea bellows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet through trials, though, though trials should come, lest the blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not apart, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be, be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it will be well with my soul. Written by Horatio B. Spafford. Some of you have heard that before. Written by Horatio B. Spafford. He wrote these words upon sailing over the very spot where his four daughters were drowned at sea. Altogether, he lost six children. He was still able to give God the glory and sing it. It is well, it is well with my soul. Huh. There's a, there's a portion of scripture in 2 Kings chapter 4. It just... Just speaking of the words of life, just speaking life, just speaking the words of life and, and, and where we have an opportunity to speak words of curse and, and words of defeat and words of surrender. Why? Because the devil has got big ears and he's listening. He's listening for you. He was listening for Job. Say it, just say it, please just say it so I can just do my, my own little victory dance. Take my own little victory lap. Just say it, please just say it. Curse God. He's listening. Why? For an opportunity to, to declare that the word of God is null and void, to declare that God is not good, 
to declare that God only gives bad things and forces you to work your way out of the hole that you, that you dug yourself into. That's not the word of God. That's not God himself. Hallelujah. For the scriptures declare that all things, all good things come from Father, the Father above. Hallelujah. Coming down from the Father of lights. Hallelujah. With whom there's no shifting or variation. There's no shifting shadows and no variation. Amen. If he declares a word, hallelujah. If he declares a good word over your life, hallelujah. Believe that he's going to fulfill that good word. Amen. Believe that he's going to fulfill that good word. So speaking of that, 2 Kings chapter 4, uh, speaking of the Shunammite woman, it's interesting. The Shunammite woman, when she found that her son was, 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 was dying, uh, she, she, she could give me, a, give, me a, give me the fastest animal you could find. So they found her a little burro. So she's riding this little burro. <laughs> she's riding this little burro, right? Little, imagine in the theater of the mind, the little short leg burro. <laughs> she's trying to get to the man of God. She's, my, she's trying to get to the man of God. She's trying to get to the man of God. And then, then, then people, it, 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 to me, it, it, now she starts walking. She starts running towards the man of God. And, and they sent the, the servant over, you know, to, to, uh, to question her. What's going on? What's happening? You know, and is it well with you? Is it well? And, and her response is this. It's so cool. It's kind of like she elbowed the guy and said, it is well with my soul. Let me just get to the man of God so I can just. So I can declare, hallelujah, what God is going to do or what he's going, what he's going to have to do in order to revive this situation. So three, quanti- three, three qualities. And the reason I'm saying this is because we've got to remember that it is well with our soul. That no matter what, hallelujah, you know, uh, they say, well, you can take everything. You just can't take my salvation. I think that's something that we need to be reminded, hallelujah. When we say it is well with our soul, it's the very fact that you can take it. You can take it. You can have it. You can, you can wrestle it away from me. That's okay. But all I know is you can't take my salvation because I know what God did for me. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Hallelujah. But, but three qualities the, the Shunammite woman had, uh, which is essential for every child of God, is number one is contentment. She was content whatever situation she was in. She was content also with what God finally made the decision over her life. She was content. Number two, she had compassion. She was compassionate and she was impassioned to get to the man of God no matter what. I don't care what vehicle you give me. You can give me a camel. You can give me a donkey. Whatever it is, I'm going to get there. Hallelujah. And the, and the third thing is commitment, amen? She was committed, hallelujah, to know where God was and to, what, to know what God, wanted to know what God was doing in her life, amen? What, his, what, his, what the answer was to her questions of life, hallelujah. She knew where to go, she knew who to see, and she knew her faith would not fail. Huh? Even though we think things are hopeless, God has the final word, huh? So somebody say it, it is well with my soul, amen? It is well by faith, hallelujah. It is well by faith, God's going to work it out. I think, I, need to, I, think, I think we need to reiterate that today, that, that we need to be reminded, you know what? It is well by faith. God is going to work it out by faith. Amen. You, you know, you may not see the end of the, the light at the end of the tunnel. It may seem bleak. It may seem uh, 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 thin for the situation. But you have to understand that God will fulfill. Hallelujah. You just have to declare, you know what? It is well. And that God is going to have his way. Amen. God is going to work it out on our behalf. Hallelujah. Somebody say you have the words of life. Listen, they're listening. They're listening. Believe it or not, they're listening. For one reason or another, they are listening. Perhaps to catch you sin, uh, messing up, or perhaps you're the only one who speaks words of life to them. Perhaps you have a heart in the order of heaven, speaking towards the least, the last, and the lost, wanting everybody to be saved, amen, that all would be saved, amen. Uh, Concern for the least and the last of the lost. You have been given the gift of life. Your words are effective and powerful and sharper than, wait a minute, that's a scripture, right? Huh? Whoa, your words are effective and powerful and sharper than what? What does Hebrews 4, 20, 12 tell us? Huh? For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of the soul and spirit and its joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Wait a minute. You have that word of life inside of you? You speak that word over people? I'll tell you what, it's quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. It pierces their soul and their spirit. And believe me, that's a hard thing to distinguish between the two. It pierces the soul and the spirit, huh? And goes into the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of their thoughts and the intents of their hearts. And you have that word to speak to them and you remain silent? You sit back after you hear in the break room people telling everybody their, 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 their story, their war stories of what's going on, the drama that's going on in their lives, and we have the audacity to sit back and say, hmm, 
they should go to church. <laughs> Hello, we are the church. <laughs> Hello, we are the vessel. We are the vessel that God has chosen. I got to say that again. We are the powerhouse that the Holy Spirit has filled us. We are the powerhouse. We are the fire-breathing Christians, hallelujah, who need to speak life into every situation to anybody who will hear, hallelujah. And even if they won't listen, hallelujah, speak it over their lives and let the Holy Spirit convict them. Oh, come on. Hmm. Wow, we've been given the gift of life. Hmm. Wow. Even when we're hurting, we can still speak life. And that's just not a Christian cliche. It's simply declaring the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Huh? You have the words of life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Look what the scriptures declare in Luke 4, 18 and 19. I hope I'm not going into overtime. Let me, just, let me just finish with this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish with this. I promise, because I can keep going, but I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stop. Okay. Uh, Luke 4, 18, 19. Watch this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Somebody say me. me. The, Spirit of the, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God. I mean, is this your first time in God's house? You, 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 you have experienced this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Come on, somebody. Yeah. This is excitable. This is ignitable. This is enough to get us going here. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach. Huh. Somebody say the words of life. Right. He's anointed me to preach the words of life, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me. Somebody say me. me. To proclaim. Somebody say life. And to release, the, to the, uh, release to the captives and recovery of sight to, sight to the blind. To set free those who are oppressed. To proclaim, somebody say the words of life. The favorable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives. And recovery of sight to the blind. To set free those who are oppressed. To proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. That sounds like a jubilee year to me. Huh? The favorable year of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let me just go ahead and conclude right there, if you will. Can you stand with me, please? We just, we just want to give honor to the... To the, to the Holy Spirit, amen. Give place to the Holy Spirit. I believe we're speaking to a bunch of grown folks in here. Otherwise, it would be a different message. The Holy Spirit is speaking to this house. Giving you the opportunity Number one, to have a fresh refilling. The Holy Spirit knows that you've been frustrated, wondering where is the, where is the revival? Where is the good results? Where are, the, where are the seats? When will the seats be filled? And the answer is simple. It's found right there in the Word. We read it in Acts chapter 4. It's simply praying and asking God for a new, a fresh Pentecostal experience. And what a better day. You know, when I, I was honored, really honored when, when Pastor uh, asked that I would come. But then to find out it was Pentecost Sunday, I'm like, oh my God, I'm quaking in my boots. But you know what? This, the cool thing about it is, there's no human effort here. This is the Holy Spirit at work. And he will. <laughs> Hallelujah. If we allow the Holy Spirit, amen. Going again back to that, where God got his, Jesus got his anointing from, it's very, very simple. It's very, very practical. Very, very common sense. Number one, obedience to his heavenly Father. Holy Spirit is speaking about obedience right now. 
of course, we know the synonym, the antonym to obedience is what? Disobedience. Jesus. And the second thing was dependence on the Holy Spirit. Those who are led by the Spirit of God shall be called the sons of God. And they shall be anointed to do great exploits. In fact, Jesus said it. Jesus said it. Greater things than these shall you do. How? Under the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to ask if you'll just, uh, just respond to this message. Amen. First thing I got to ask. What has or has there been a prevention of you enjoying the fullness of life? Right? Jesus said it. The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly. You've been in God's house. You know the word of God. You're a seasoned saint. I just need to simply ask, has disobedience been a factor in your life, in your Christian walk? Simple disobedience. And I'm not talking about sin. I, I can't judge your sin. I don't know your sin. In fact, I'm not going to use a laundry list of sin. Because the minute I do, if I say a certain sin, you know, oh, he didn't, he didn't read my sin, so I'm cool. That's not, that's, not the, that's not the fact. I like what James says. James makes it clear. He makes it simple and clear. He says, to him who knows to do good and doesn't do it, to him it is sin. So there's no list of sins I'm going to give you because the Holy Spirit is speaking. So question, has disobedience been a factor? <laughs> if it has... Let's do business with God. Let's do business with God so that we can be spirit-led and that there be no apprehension whatsoever to what the Lord is telling us. We will declare the word of God. How? Boldly. The second thing is that perhaps you have been frustrated because you've served, you've been obedient, you've, you've worked, you've experienced and you've sacrificed, and you haven't, you, you haven't experienced, you don't, you don't see the, the revival, the, the power, the anointing that you feel like you should see already. Let's, why don't we pray and ask God for that second feeling, the same, the way these disciples spoke and prayed, for a refilling of the power of the Holy Ghost, amen? A refreshing that our personal Pentecost will be powerful and enriched, and that we can we will be used of God. Hallelujah. This, so can we just respond to that word right now? Can I just ask you guys to come? Come to the altar in your own special way. You know what your need is. If perhaps there is some business you need to do, let's do it with God right now. Repentance is the key to revival. Repentance is the key to revival. If you... If you, if you review the Azusa Street experience, every one of them came in, repented, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. The power of His anointing fell upon them. And they became missionaries. They became evangelists. Just right off the street, they became missionaries, became evangelists, and began to declare the word, uh, the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Spirit of God, speak. For your servants are listening. Holy Spirit, move. Flow. Touch. Forgive. Heal. If you have a burden right now, I just I just like for you to just Wherever you're at, where, where you're standing, where you're sitting, if you're here at this altar, if you got a burden, can you just put your hand on your heart right now? If you got a burden right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna declare the word of God, but you gotta put your hand over your heart. If you got a burden, we're gonna declare the word of God over you right now. In the name of Jesus, for the scriptures declare 
Come unto me, all who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light, saith the Lord. I just want you to release that burden right now to the Lord. Say, Lord, you can have it. I won't carry it. I'm going to trust you. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. I surrender to you right now. I release my burden. Now, whoever, whoever that was for, I want you to take a deep breath and just breathe out freedom. Breathe out peace. breathe out abundant living hallelujah 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 now if you guys would just agree with me in prayer right now I just want to pray for those here at this altar I feel like repentance is taking place and I believe that repentance precedes revival. I believe that repentance is taking place right now. Your personal experience, give it to God right now. Repent, for the kingdom is at hand. Repent, that times of refreshing may come according to the scriptures. Repent, that times of refreshing may come according to the scriptures. In the name of Jesus, Rabasitirian, Ikatababasia. In the name of Jesus, healing. Release that burden in the name of Jesus. Lift that burden. Forgiveness. Let's begin again. Let's start fresh. Let's start anew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Karabasia. In the name of Jesus. Times of refreshing. Times are refreshing. Times are refreshing. Times are refreshing. Times are refreshing in the name of Jesus. Release it. Release it. Release it. Release it. Karabasia in the name of Jesus. Times are refreshing. Holy Spirit. Fresh.